Hi TNT, it's Mr. Jericho here with your lesson for this week. We continue going through Agents of Grace, and this week we hope that you guys have so much that you can learn about God. And this week we are at 1.5, God is our peace. So what we're going to do is you guys need your book, um, and I have my Bible with me. And here is what I want to tell you guys today, that God is our peace in a chaotic world of so many things that are so unknown, with so many things that are uncertain, and there's so much struggle in the world, we can experience peace that is beyond understanding through Jesus Christ. It was just in February and March uh, when we were just having, you know what? Christmas just happened, New Year's just happened, January, February, and then all of a sudden coronavirus hit. The whole world stopped. Us Americans have been watching the news and all of a sudden March 13th, we were all told to stay indoors to buy a bunch of hand sanitizers. And there was not peace in the world. All the toilet paper was gone. All the hand sanitizers were gone. All the Clorox wipes were gone. The whole world changed. And so what are we trying to teach you guys today? We're trying to teach you that we can experience and find peace in God. Peace in this world, we are all wanting it. Just the other day, I was listening to my son, my five-year-old son Moses, talk about the difference between want and need. And he says need is the thing that keeps us alive. That's different than wanting something. We need peace. We need peace in the world around us because there's so much chaos, and we need peace in our hearts as well. And you know what? The world offers peace. The world says, you know what? Every day, what you need to do is you just need to meditate more. You need to meditate more, and you need to just quiet yourself, listen to the way that you breathe, ignore the noise around you, and meditate. And you know, don't get me wrong, there are health benefits to all those things. But the peace that the world offers is temporary. They might say, hey, follow this new diet, clean your cupboards of all the junk food, clean all of those things, but it's temporary. You could clean all your cupboards of all the sugar and you could still not experience peace. There's even this one where it says you can be minimal in the way that you um, have clothes. That they said the most or the least amount of clothes that you need is just 32 pieces of clothing. That includes all your socks, all your undies, all your shirts, and all your jeans. And you don't need to shop anymore. All, you only need 32 pieces of clothing, right? And yes, that might offer you a little bit of rest, but it's temporary peace because that has not changed what's happening in the world. That has not changed what's happening inside, right? And so we could look at all these things. Some people say, if I just had more money, if I just had fill in the blank, more money, a bigger house, more friends, if I just can be happy, then I can have peace. But the problem with that statement is God is not in any one of those. If you just said, I want more of God, and then I can experience peace, maybe that's where it is. So the world offers us temporary peace that lasts for this long. It might not solve the problem, but we know that peace comes from God. Our verse today comes from John 16, and it says this, Jesus says to his disciples, this is him on his way to the cross, and he's telling them, I am going to go to the Father after I come back to life, but I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and this is what he says, I told you these things so that in me, in Jesus, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus says, there is trouble in this world. And he will one day come back and right everything that's wrong. He's creating this new reality for us. But there is trouble. That's why we need peace. It's not that we want peace. It's that we need peace. And take heart. Take heart in the very last part is very important because Jesus has overcome the world. What did Jesus do? Jesus died on the cross for you and for me and for the sins of the whole world, the ways that we hurt each other, the ways that we hurt ourselves. Jesus came to fix all of that. And if he, Jesus said, if we can fix the problem that we have against God, then everything else will get fixed. Let me share with you guys two things. One is a story where peace can be seen. And then the other is what are we to do to achieve peace in this world? In our Bibles, you can turn to Mark 4. And in Mark 4, Jesus calms the storm. So Jesus, during the evening time, he says to his disciples, let's go to the other side of the lake. So they ride a boat. The crowd follows behind, but they couldn't go because there was a boat. So Jesus goes on a boat ride and he falls asleep. 
and it says this in verse 37 of Mark 4. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat. And so it nearly swamped. The wind was blowing. The waters were rising. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. While there's a huge storm, it's dark outside. There's lightning bolts, there's rain, there's wind. Jesus is taking a nap. That's pure chaos happening. But Jesus has so much peace that he's just asleep. Asleep at the front of the boat. The disciples finally decide to wake him up. They're shaking up, Jesus! They said, teacher, do you not care that we're about to die? So Jesus gets up. Peaceful Jesus, from his nap, probably stretches. He comes out and he tells the wind, shh, quiet down, be still. What Jesus was trying to do was he was experiencing peace because he knows the Father so good that even though there's trouble in the world, he says, I want what's inside of me to reflect what's happening. So Jesus commands the winds to die down. Jesus commands the waves to stop. Jesus commands the thunder and the rain to stop. And guess what happens? Immediately, the wind dies down and it was completely calm. His disciples were wondering, what? Is this the God who is creator? Yes, it is. That is the first story. That even though there was so much happening in the world, Jesus had so much peace. And he can do that in our lives. The next passage is found in Philippians. Philippians 4. We were just at Mark 4. In Philippians 4. Philippians 4, it says this. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in every situation, pray. Pray with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. And the peace that comes from God, it transcends all that we can think about, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We can find peace in God. God is our peace. It doesn't matter what the trouble is happening in the world. It doesn't matter what the chaos is happening in the world. Because we have a right relationship with God, we can have peace. And the way that we get there is to pray. Is to pray with thanksgiving. That whatever circumstance is happening in our lives, we can rejoice and say, Lord God, would you help me see what you see in this scenario? And may the peace that only comes from God. It doesn't come from meditating. It doesn't come from getting more things or getting less things. It comes from God. And God who gives us generously will let us experience peace that can guard our hearts and can guard our minds. In our family, we talk about peace this way. Peace is when we're no longer afraid. Peace is when we trust in God so much that we're not afraid of what's in the world. We're not afraid of what's going to happen to us when we walk out the door. We're not afraid when things happen in our lives because we know that we are in God. That is our lesson for this week. God bless you guys. We'll see you.